Hello there, time for another video tutorial and this time around we'll be having some fun using particles and voids and we'll create a, a cute little animation now let's dive right in I'll hit delete to erase the default cube and select delete and I'll hit shift A to add a text I'm zooming in a bit and I'll hit the tab key to change the text to follow. Now tab key again, go back to object mode and I'll now hit the R key to rotate and X to constrain notation on the X axis and I'll type down 90. I'll now move to the text options for the text object data here and I'll extrude my text a bit at 0 0.12 it's good and I'll also increase the, the resolution for the for the text I'll set it to 16 and I'll also click at the align center So my text is now centered, I'll hit Shift D to duplicate my text and as you can see I have a copyright here, I'll right click to cancel any movement and I'll change the offset value a bit, I'll bring it down for the second text object and now I'm going to, in to increase the extrude value at about there let's bring the offset down a bit more ok now as you can see we have the inner text and the outer text while the inner text is selected I'll hold down the shift key to select the outer text and hit ctrl P to set parent to object and I'm doing this because now I can right click to select the parent object and hit the G key to grab it and the inner text, the child, will follow the motion for the parent. Now my text is looking good. I'm going to add a particle, a particle object. I'll hit Shift A and add mess a UV sphere. I'll click smooth for shading and I'll hit the S key to scale my sphere down at about there. I'll also hit the M key to move my sphere to the second layer. OK. Now time to create the emitter, the object that will carry the particle system. I'll hit Shift A to add mass and ecosphere. I'll change the subdivisions from 2 to 1 and I'll hit 1 and 5 on my numeric keypad to switch to front of view I'll hit the tab key and hit the S key to scale my ecosphere and Z to constrain uh, scaling excuse me on the Z axis and I'll scale it up now tab key for object mode and I'll hit the G key to grab my ecosphere and X to move it to the side. Now while I'm at the front of view, I right click my text to select it and hit the Del key on my numeric keypad to frame the text and then I'll hit Ctrl Alt 0 just to place the camera facing the text and I right click this frame here to select the camera and I'll hit the G key to grab it and the Y key to constrain movement on the Y axis and move it back at about there now let's move on, I want to right click the emitter to select it and I'm going to add a particle system to it I'll move into the particle tab and I'll hit the plus icon here to add a particle system now I believe that the number is 
uh, way too high at the 1000 particles so I'm going to bring this one down at 250 now also change the end value from 200 to 20 and I'm also going to change the lifetime from 50 to say 450 and while I'm changing the lifetime I'll also change the end frame for the animation from 240 to 390 okay now back to the particle settings and I'll also click volume so that the uh, emitter will use the entire mesh, the entire volume to emit the particles from and I'm also going to scroll down here at the physics panel and I'll click voids now by clicking voids you can see that we have a whole new set of options for our particles and I'll quickly scroll down here to change the render options to set it to object and for the duplicate object I'll select the sphere now back to the void options and I'll hit alt A again just to see the animation and let's take a look at the particles you can see that they are too small I'll hit the escape key and change the size from 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 I'll also decrease the max air speed, it is set at 10 for the voids and I'll bring it down to 5 and we have the relations down here I'll click the plus icon here and select the particle uh, the object holding the particle system uh, which is the ecosphere, the emitter and the important uh, options for the voids are right here at the void brain tab and as you can see now we have two orders for our voids the first one is separate and the second one is flock now we don't care about the flock option for this one so we'll select the flock and hit the minus icon to delete it So what we're doing now is telling the voids that we want them to stay uh, separate from each other. What I'm also going to do is change the air personal value here and it is set to 1. And the reason I'm changing this and I've done some tests about it is because the size of the particle is uh, currently at 0 0.2 and this is actually the one-fifth of the actual particle size so I'm going to increase five times the air personal value set it to five just because you know if this was set to one this would also be at one uh, this the air personal value so I might be wrong, not exactly sure about it. You can always throw a comment in just to make sure. And now I'm going to right click the follow uh, text, the follow object. And I'll move here at the physics. And I'm going to select the click force field and select the harmonic for the type for the force field I'm going to you increase the strength from 1 let's say to 4 and I'll also decrease the damping from 1 to 0 0.4 let's set a small amount of noise at 0 0.1 and I'll now hit Alt A to see the animation and you can see the particles are rushing out from the emitter to the object but there is something I want to change, I'll hit the escape key and I'm going to change the shape from point because as you can see the particles were all gathering at the center at the origin of the object so I'm going to change the point to surface for the shape now I'll hit Alt A again 
and as you can see the particles of void are surrounding the entire object so this looks pretty nice I'm going to move my emitter a bit, I'll hit the Z key to grab it and the Z key to constrain movement on the Z axis, I'll bring it down a bit at about there and I'll right click the text and remember by selecting the uh, outer text we're also moving the, the the inner one and I'll hit 0 on my uh, numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view and hit the Z key to grab my text and Z to constrain movement on the Z axis and I'm going to move it one unit up now let's add some animation for our text and the particles, the voids will follow so I'm hitting the I key and insert oh wait, wait a minute, uh, I'm not going to do it at frame 1 I'm going to hit the right arrow for uh, to move some frames forward and as you can see at frame 120 approximately we have the void surrounding the text object and I'm going to move to frame 130 and now I'm going to hit the I key now it's the time and insert the location keyframe for the text I now move some frames ahead let's say move to frame 170 and I'll hit the Z key to grab and the Z key to constrain movement on the Z axis and I'll move my text down at about there and I'll also hit the Z key to grab and the X key to constrain movement on the X axis and I'll move my text to the side now I key again and insert a new location keyframe so moving some frames ahead again waiting for the particles to catch up and surround the object I think I'll move to frame 230 and hit the I key because I want my text to stay put until frame 230 to insert a new location keyframe and then I'll move up to frame 200 and let's say 270 and hit the Z key to grab my text Z to constrain movement on the Z axis move it up Z again and X to constrain movement on the, Z, on the X axis move it to the side and once more, Z key to grab and Y to constrain movement to the way on the Y axis and move it back. At about there. Now, and I now hit the I key to insert the final location keyframe. Now I'll move back to frame 1. I'll click right here. Just to take a look at the animation, hit the Alt A to check it out and you can see the voids surrounding the text and the text moves and the voids follow so right now this looks nice time to set up our scene, our materials and lightning I'll hit the escape key and hit the right arrow on my keyboard to move some frames up move some frames ahead and our text is selected we have the outer text selected let's add the material to it I'll call it out text and for this one I'll just bring down the specular intensity to zero and I'll keep it simple so this one is white now right clicking to select the interior the text that yeah, is at the inside add a new material to it as well I'll call it in text I'll change the diffuse color I'll make it blue at about there and I'll bring the specular intensity to 0 0.1 and the hardness to let's say 20 
I'll now select the boy, the particle, and I'm moving here and click the sphere to select the void. You can see it, it's at layer 2. And I'll add a new material for the sphere as well. And I'm going to name it void mat. I'll make this one blue as well. We'll make it light blue. And about there. I'll change the specular from Cooktor to Wardslow and I'll, in, I'll decrease the intensity from 0 0.5 to 0 0.2. Now one more thing, I'll also add some transparency for the material. I'll keep it uh, at the Z transparency. I could use ray trace, but it'll just increase my render times. And for the Z transparency, I'll increase the Fresnel value. I'll bring it up at about there. And I'll also change the alpha from 1 to 0 0.9. Okay, I think we're good. And I'm going to do one last thing. And I'll add a texture for our material, click New, and I'll change the type from Clouds to Blend, and let's click both to see the material as it is now, and I'll also change the word options, I'll, I've set the horizon color to black, feel free to set it to black if you want to. I'll click the environment lightning, I'll increase the energy to 1.1 and I'll use the ray trace gather and I'll increase the samplers from 5 to 6. Now zero on my numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view and I'll just render an image so we can see what we got here. And as you can see, this looks pretty nice. I'll hit the escape key. And as I said before, we have keyframes for this one. So this is an animation. You can uh, easily render an animation, set the uh, output files. So this is the tutorial. You can always experiment and create different clips using the same uh, the same workflow. You could also use a another solid object uh, for the boards to follow. You could use a cube or a sphere or whatever. As you can see, it works pretty nice and it looks pretty sweet. You could also fiddle with the with the physics options for the for the harmonic here for the force build for the text feel free to experiment and create your own your own versions so this is it i'll be posting some results and thanks for watching